Good morning. And firstly, let me say happy birthday to you. Today is your birthday, so big celebration oh, to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate yeah. it. Of course. I hope we're going to be um, having a big party. Or is it going to be a Zoom party? It should be a Zoom party. It was almost spoiled yesterday by the Chelsea performance. But ah. <laughs> <laughs> So you're a Chelsea fan. Before we get into the Brazil Ebo now, let's talk about Chelsea's performance against Liverpool and Chelsea under Frank Lampard. Um, well, uh, for a first season in charge, it wasn't bad. Um, it's been a, a roller coaster season for fans of the club and the, you know disciples of the club, as I call myself. Um, unfortunately, uh, defensively we have let ourselves down quite a lot. Um, offensively, we're great. You know, a team goes away to a, to the champions of England, Liverpool, and scores three goals. What more do you want from the attacking force? Not a lot. But then don't let them in at the back and you let five in. So what can you do? That epitomised the season that um, Chelsea has had and uh, the difficulty that Frank Lampard has faced. So I suppose this would be a wake-up call for him to know that he will have to strengthen defensively uh, in the summer transfer window because 54 goals let in in 37 games is very unChelsea like mm. defensively. Very true. Now, um, Okwe here is um, my co-uncle. He's an Arsenal fan, and I'm sure you're going to be sworn enemies by the, um, <laughs> when you take on Arsenal uh, on the 1st of August, talking about the FA Cup final. What are your expectations from the, the club? Well, I mean, you know, every morning you wake up, you don't know what Chelsea is going to turn up, which version of them is going to turn up. So that's what we're going to get. On the 1st of August, there will be the hunger for, for silverware. But like I said to you, we're always exciting going forward, Chelsea. It's at the back. And at the back, it's simple, small mistakes that actually characterize the game. So it will be a very good game. There will be goals. I don't know who would have more. I don't know who would have less. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about some DBC Ebro. Now, what was your reaction when you heard he won the Super League title and also helped the club qualify for the Champions League, becoming the first African to do so? Well, listen, it's great. It's um, fantastic news for, for Africa. I've always been a very strong advocate for the prowess and the ability of Africa to actually do well, you know, in the world out there. And that a club in Albania has given him the chance and the time to actually exert and put together a team that actually could win is wonderful. It shows what we as Africans can do if we're given the opportunity. We've been clamoring for it in England out here for opportunities for black people, for African people to take over clubs in management. We see how Frank Lampard has done, how Steven Gerrard is doing, but then when it comes to people like Saul Campbell, um, we see where they put him in the, in the third tier of um, English football because they never given that chance. We see the likes of Kolotori, we see Sheyolov in Jana, they're doing all right. But this guy, um, Egbo, has, has set the bar now. It's now showing that we do have the quality to actually take on good and big jobs. And the onus is not only on the boys, the, the managers, it's also on the administrators of African football to make sure that we propel these people and make them feel wanted even within us so that the people out there would appreciate them because Ebo has shown that he could do it. Quiet, unassuming, and he went about his business, and he did it fantastically well. Congratulations to him again. Now, you know, uh, all of us social media, I, well, I saw no matter how much uh, of a success you are, so many people will still come out and criticize you. Now, some people have said, come on, it's just qualifying them for the Champions League, and they're not going to even make it out of the group stage anyways. But is it not enough to know that he has qualified a particular team to the elite when it comes to football, talking about the Champions League, and also winning the Albanian club? And do you really think that he's going to serve as an inspiration to spur other African coaches, especially here in Nigeria, to put in more work to achieve feats like this? Number one, yes, it should. It would spur them to do more. It should do. Um, we should have that inspiration and that motivation. I don't buy the idea that um, it's only a small country. Or, I'll tell you something, a very, very short story. When uh, my mentor is Jose Mourinho, when he was at Chelsea, I trained under him. And the very first thing he did when he came to Chelsea in 2004, well, everybody said he was a bit arrogant. And he said, why wouldn't I be? Which manager in England has actually won what I have won? Hmm. And everybody went quiet. 
because it was a statement of fact. No manager in England has actually won the Champions League as of the time when he came here. Mm. And therefore, if anybody questions Emmanuel Egbo for winning the Albanian Cup and it's, uh, he only qualified them, let him ask, how many of you have actually done it? anywhere and therefore that is the motivation that we need that is the positive energy that we actually need to actually drive ourselves drive the african course into the fact that we can do it if we set our minds to it but we've got to always be positive about it because negativity and all these little mudslinging will not help us at all very true. Now, talking about, still talking about Ndubi Siegbo, he has put African coaches definitely on the map. But do you see him getting bigger appointments? Um, I think he needs to stay there probably another year and prove himself. Let him show that what he did is not a fluke. Having said that, if the opportunity comes for him to actually do something, why not? But I would think that now that he has qualified the team for the Champions League, let's see how far he can take that team. And that is no measure of his ability. I'm not saying that if he doesn't take them far, it means he's a bad coach. But at least he can show that consistency, stability can be achieved if they stick by him. And then if he has another good season, nothing stops him going for further big appointments anywhere in the world. Nothing stopping him now because he is a champion, but he can actually prove to be even a better champion if he takes his time and picks his, uh, picks his options very well. Very true. Thank you very much for speaking to us today. today. Thank you. Thank you. Because do enjoy the rest of your day. And once again, a happy birthday to you. Many thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. All right. Continue to stay safe. Well, great analysis right there. And once again, we say congratulations to uh, Ndubisi Emmanuel Egbo for qualifying the Albanian team. Talking about uh, Tirana uh, for the Champions League and also winning the Albanian Cup. And I just hope that he continues this good feat and um, he serves as an encouragement to other African coaches. Remember, um, last week, Saturday, we talked about um, football coaching and um, the grassroots. We saw um, GD Ladipo and uh, Shingi, they gave their own opinion on how coaches should get better. And I feel like this is a good fit and also a way that African coaches will learn from and continue from there. Definitely, look, this is a great um, barrier. This is a great um, stepping stone for mm -hmm. Nigerian coaching. And I believe um, people will start to look at us in a different light, actually. But now, the onus is now to the coaches here in Nigeria and even those in the diaspora. We saw, we've seen what he did um, by going out there in Albania. What most people don't know that, number one, he's actually an Albanian citizen. Mm -hmm. He did play for Tirana as a goalkeeper. So with the good relationship he had with the club, he got hired there, first of all, as a goalkeeping coach. And then he saw the opportunity that was given. And then he stepped up and look at what he has done with the team. Being able to manage a successful team or being able to be successful while managing a team is just simple. Mm -hmm. Have your own brand and philosophy. You need to believe that before you can put that to the players. When you do that, then just be disciplined. Mm -hmm. Implement it and get the players that you know that will want to work for you. If you take a look at the nationality of, of the players, it's quite diverse. Not all of them are Albanian players. You have so many players from all over the world. Even you have one English player in that team. Mm -hmm. So it's the ability of the manager to actually um, push through his own philosophy and the players to follow through with what he has to say to them. So look, it's beautiful for Nigerian football, and I'm so happy that he's getting all the accolades that he does deserve. Yeah. People will talk definitely, but don't worry, next season will come. We'll see how far they're going to go in the Champions League. But just like Tunde Adelakun said, look, it's not, that's not going to be a measure of his ability, mm -hmm. but then it's something to look forward to. The first Nigerian manager to coach a team in the Champions League. Mm, very true. Great success right there for Ndubisi Emmanuel Igbo. And once again, we say congratulations to you.